Hey, welcome to Wildlife Wednesday. I'm Dave from Fish, Wildlife and Parks and we are out here ice fishing, trying to catch fish this afternoon. Cool, well, we've got a fish. Rainbow trout, kind of a small rainbow trout, but a nice, a pretty fish. And if you look at this, he's got a lot of slime on his body, this layer of scales and slime. Some of that is sticking on me, but with my wet hands, I'm leaving most of the slime on the fish, which is where we want to leave it. And that's what we're going to talk about. So a lot of us realize after you've handled a fish and your hands are kind of wet and slimy, you say, why, why is that fish slimy? Why would a fish want to be slimy? Or what's the advantage to being slimy? Well, the basic anatomy of a fish, they have a couple of different layers that protect their body. Their first layer is a layer of skin and attached to the skin, in most cases, for most fish in Montana, there are some small scales over that. And the scales act sort of like almost an armor coating, they protect the fish. But over the top of the scales, there's a layer of slime. And I always used to think the fish were slimy and wet because um, that helped them to become slippery and get away from predators. If you try and grab a fish in the water, it's just about impossible because they're so slippery. But really the slime is there to protect from something way smaller than that. And by small, I'm talking about things like bacteria and fungus and germs and things in the water that would uh, get onto the fish through its skin. So the slime is the outermost layer of the fish and it makes it really hard for those things in the water, whether it's bacteria or disease organisms, to grasp onto that fish and to start to hurt the fish. The slime on the outside of the fish can also act a little bit like a bandage. That is the same way if we get a cut and we put a bandage, it protects us from getting infected. If the fish gets injured, it can secrete more slime, cover up that injury, and it acts like its own um, self-made bandage on there. Oh, we got a fish. So besides acting as a bandage, the slime to a small extent can help smooth down all the little bumps and irregularities on the fish's skin and scales, um, helps them become a little more um, hydrodynamic as they move through the water, so it helps them to swim a little better. Um, so there's a lot of reasons that the slime's important. But what we want to do when we're going to release a fish, when we want to take the best possible care of that fish, we always want to make sure you start by having wet hands. If you have dry hands and you grab a wet, slimy fish, guess what? All that slime is going to come off of the fish and onto your hands. Keep it out of the water as short a time as you possibly can. Keep it near the water so if you drop it, if it wiggles and drops, it doesn't fall a long ways. And get it back in as quickly as you can. Ice fishing season is drawing to a close as I look around here. The ice is going to be gone soon, but those same rules apply for open water as well. Wet your hands, keep the fish out of the water as little time as possible. Get it right back in. Give it a kiss if you want, but get it right back in the water and go catch another fish. So thanks for watching us today on Wildlife Wednesday.